Hi, I'm Deborah Lamada, and this is Woman Entrepreneur Spotlight. I started this podcast because I believe that every woman entrepreneur has a story to tell, and by sharing that story, she could be helping the next woman entrepreneur looking for some guidance. So tune in, get comfortable, and enjoy the series. Hi, and welcome to Woman Entrepreneur Spotlight. I am so excited to have today Asia Dupree. Started Comfort Zone Clothing back in 2017. Am I right? 2017, yes. Okay. Asia created her own logo, which is a story of its own. Asia and I have worked, we've worked together for several years. We met probably about five years ago. Before we get started with that, I always ask two questions. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Ah, let's see. Honestly, I would probably live in Amsterdam. And I say that because of, I feel like when I visited, it was like such a sense of freedom living here. Like you get like certain looks sometimes, get the sense of like, like you're uncomfortable in certain situations or places. So when I went to Amsterdam... It could have just been an experience, but I didn't get one look. I didn't get like a, is that a girl or a guy kind of look? Me being like African-American, I didn't get any looks. It was just like comfort, comfortable. And like everyone was like accepting. And then like, I don't know. So I picked Amsterdam. It was just like a lot slower pace and I could be present. So, and it was beautiful. Yeah. I, I, I have visited Amsterdam. I, I was young. So Amsterdam, I like it. What's the most important lesson you have learned over the course of your career? That to be patient. If you have a plan, just be prepared that it's going to go the opposite way. And just to be patient with yourself, to trust the process, to make sure you're you're like at the end of the day you're doing it for what for the reason that you love it you're not doing it because of the money or you're not doing it because someone else would you do it you're doing it because you're passionate about it just to make a difference at the end of the day and that and that makes the difference right there i mean you have to do it for yourself and not for all those other reasons that you had just mentioned um Mm -hmm. and, and patience i think patience for for so many things in life tell me about comfort zone clothing how you got started and your logo, which you created, and how you came about that. Okay, so I started Comfort Zone back in 2017. I was like doodling on an iPad, and I was like, I need to come up with a logo about, because I was always told life begins at the end of your comfort zone. So I was like, okay, let me focus on Comfort Zone, and let me try and create a logo that represents comfort zone but also at the same time my my life so like lgbt plus community so i incorporated like the rainbow colors along the sea and the zone is like arrows meaning like different directions that you can go in what it mean i guess what it means to me i I guess i'm living in it now so before i was like oh life begins on the end of your comfort zone i felt like i was being to be honest i felt like i was being a hypocrite because i was in my comfort zone for so long Right. And now I'm finally living out of my comfort zone. So I'm understanding. So now I appreciate it so much more. Right. And I understand the music. Like, I'm like, you have to be uncomfortable for like life to actually, to enjoy life and to see like possibilities are endless and it's your life and you can do whatever you want with it. And the clothing line. So what made you or draw you closer to a, a clothing line to, to sell? Gotcha. Um, just to get the message across, to see, to just, I, at first I put on a t-shirt and I was like, oh, let me just pass this t-shirt out, give this t-shirt to someone, give this t-shirt to someone. And then people were asking for more merchandise. And I'm just like, oh, like this message, like this message can get across to other people that life does begin out of your, in, of your comfort zone and to just be comfortable in your own skin. Um, so I figured, figured I could put it on hoodies and sweatpants and just comfortable clothes that remind people that like to be comfortable in your own skin, hats and sweatpants so I decided clothing because I like I don't know clothing makes me comfortable and it feels good on your skin and I go with quality and long lasting and so you've taken that comfort zone which you've stepped out of you've created this clothing line and if somebody wanted to get in contact with you to purchase any of the clothing line where where are they getting contact with you these days if you guys have Instagram I'm on Instagram and it's at comfortzone.clothing. And if you go on Instagram, there's a link to the website. Also, there the website is comfortzoneclothingco.com. Or you can just shoot me a message. I can give you my email address. It's comfortzoneclothing at yahoo.com. Okay. You can also reach out to me there. And I can also give you my phone number if you send me a message. Did you put a business plan together in the beginning? So I did not. This at first I called it an expensive hobby because at first I was just doing it out of fun. I was like, oh, this is fun. Like I can make this and I'll do this here. Then the more people asked, I was like, oh, I have to do like I have to keep on like keep up with like the demand. And then like so I had to like reach out, use my own money. So I was saving money separately to be able to fund for comfort zone to pay. At the time I was paying a guy to make the hoodies. He was doing screen printing, screen printing, and he was pressing vinyl onto the the product. So I was paying him. 
to order the shirts, hoodies, like everything I needed, and then paying him on like to do the work. And then YouTube, everyone was like, YouTube is the biggest teacher. I started to use YouTube and then I bought a, a press for myself and then I started to buy wholesale items. And I was like, I can do all this for so much cheaper right. rather than paying someone else. So I basically used someone first and then I taught myself, which I enjoyed a lot more because I was like, oh, I'm creating this stuff. And then I get to see people wear it. And then right. I get to see the impact it makes. So yeah. it became a lot more personal. Don't go anywhere. The interview will continue right after this. Looking for something personalized for the graduate, bright to be, new mom, grandmother, or grandfather? With Magnum Abilities interchangeable magnetic jewelry, you can take a cherished memory and create a custom magnetic insert. The insert can be paired with Magnum Abilities pendants, bracelets, and keychains. You can see the Magnum Abilities jewelry line at debralamata.magnabilities.com. See the latest product that has been added, the Magna Frame and Picture Duo. Magna Frames can be personalized as well. If you need assistance, you can reach out to Deborah LaMotta at 203-445-3240 or on the website at debralamata.magnabilities.com and click on the contact icon. Remember, don't forget that special person in your life. And now, the conclusion of my interview with Asia Dupree of Comfort Zone Clothing. So if you had to do that part over again, would you start with a business pl- business plan? Would you have put more put, put more thought into it? Absolutely, 100%. I would have put a lot more thought into it rather than just jumping in blinded. But again, you live and you learn. And, then- and we can go back to, you know, your comfort zone and stepping out and, exactly. and then taking it, on like- your, taking it on yourself. Yes, I like would go to Michael's and get like screen printing kits and like go on YouTube, try to figure it out. And then it's just like trial and error, trial and error. And then like you finally get used to it. And then you start to enjoy it. And then like you're like, you're just like proud of yourself. What hurdles have you had to jump over, get around to get to where you are at this stage with comfort zone clothing? I think the, the hurdle probably like maybe financially, like I wasn't like I was I didn't know how much money it would take to put into owning like having a business like that business part of it I had no idea so I would do a lot more research about it rather than just jumping into it like I didn't know like I had to register with the state of Connecticut I didn't know I needed like a like to get a tax ID number like I didn't know I needed like to get like I needed a business credit card like I needed all these other things and I'm just like right. oh and then so I would do so much more research but at the same time I was trying like I was doing all this during the pandemic I started to get into this during the pandemic more which allowed me more time because we were stuck home so I had a lot more time to do research so I'm like blessed about that part but I would definitely would definitely do more research like so yeah and bring it back to the business plan kind of the same with me with podcasting fortunately i don't have to sink too much financially into it but Mm -hmm. during the pandemic i was going to start it up earlier than i'm doing i took the time i've done my research um and hopefully at the end like you said you put a plan together and it'll it'll all come together out of my comfort zone (laughs) yes (laughs) what would you change or what would what would have made it easier in the beginning to get things started for you? I think maybe having like a partner, like someone like a, someone else alongside me that can kind of be my support or we could support each other, like balancing so many other things. And then like focusing on this, I feel like I needed to be a whole other person. Right. Like I need like, I need like a separate brain, like separate set of hands. Like, so <laughs> I just need like extra arms, like an octopus or something. I don't know. But um, yeah. just having someone like, I don't know, like more support. Like I had a lot of support, like within like friends and like, especially you, Deb, but like just like physical help, I think. And then like just the research part for sure. Right. And I think for me doing this podcast, which I've mentioned to you off of the interview, is that if this helps connect people, connect other entrepreneurs that you could mentor or you could join up with, or somebody else to talk to, somebody else that's local, where can I outsource this? One of what I want to accomplish with this podcast, besides just getting us all out there as women entrepreneurs. And I think you just said it, having that whatever it may be, somebody physically there, somebody to pick up the phone and say, hey, um, mm-hmm. would that help would have helped you in the beginning if you had that that network absolutely i went into it just blinded i don't know but just like you said like networking like um i started to do pop-up shops and i would meet other people and then they would help me like oh here's this card like contact this person they can help you with this or like this is how i started and this is where like i am and this is route i took i tried this like you should try that maybe like it didn't work out for me but it might for you it was a bunch of networking and that just made me it was like the reassurance i needed so asia you're not like you're not on the wrong track like you're you're doing everything fine 
second. Like you just, you'll get it. Right. So I just need that like boost. And I think we all need that boost. I mean, I know sitting, you know, thinking and contemplating putting my podcast together. It's like, what am I crazy? I was like, and who can I talk to? So I have a great DJ friend. Her name is Kathleen Coolis. She's a DJ out of Seymour. Uh, DJ yeah. ja- Jazzy Cat. She's yeah. she's my go-to. Who can I interview? And I think I think we all need that. And I'm so again from this interview with you. Would you do that for the next person? Would Absolutely. you be a mentor to somebody else? Absolutely. Okay. Because they need that. Like everyone needs that. Like I would a hundred percent. No matter what. Like I wouldn't even hesitate because I know I need it. I, and I think we're afraid sometimes to ask for help, mm-hmm. right? Like you're going to be a burden somehow or like- A burden or I don't, we, should, we already should know that. Yeah, like it's right? yours. Why are you asking me for help kind of thing? But we, you know, it's needed. <laughs> it, it definitely, absolutely is definitely needed. If you had one piece of advice to give to another entrepreneur just starting their own business, what would it be? It would probably be like to remember why you started in the beginning. Like when you feel like you want to give up, like just remember that why you started and then like you could be like that ounce of hope for someone. Like there's someone out there that you can like impact their life even like like without you even thinking you are so just don't give up and like you said if you need help ask don't be afraid to ask there's no stupid question and like youtube is the biggest teacher honestly for youtube absolutely and i've used it not only for for my you know learning how to do a podcast putting my things together but i'm also a, a, a wedding officiant and I've, yes. gone to, <laughs> I've gone to youtube also to watch other people uh mm-hmm. yeah you have to do your homework with whatever you're doing, take an extra five minutes out of your day to do some homework and put a plan together. Yes, um, and also invest in yourself. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself. That's absolutely. it. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Any Anything else you can tell our listeners? Anything else you want to let them know about you? And you can also give all your uh, contact information again. Um, just for like the listeners, uh, I appreciate just you listening and I value your time. If you want to reach me, I can be reached again on Instagram and it's at comfortzone.clothing. And my email address is comfortzoneclothing at yahoo.com. And the website is comfortzoneclothingco.com. And I just like, am just really appreciative to be in this position, even though I didn't even think it would make it to this point. Like I never thought I'd be interviewing about a comfort zone on a podcast like I'm just very grateful for this experience and it's just, yes I'm very <laughs> humble I am grateful and I just uh, I never I feel like I'm winning an award <laughs> so well I'm, I know when I know personally how hard you have worked how much that comfort zone means to you and mm-hmm. I wish you all the best and all the success success and I think your tag tagline I struggle to see where where I fit in later realizing I was born to stand out. And that says it all for you. I mean, I can say right here that that is you in a nutshell. You are are an amazing person. You continue to to push forward, (laughs) but it's true. Uh, You have have had hurdles to jump over, get around in so many parts of your life. Uh, Mm -hmm. Kudos to you. I appreciate you. Yep, I appreciate you. I appreciate you too. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 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 Asia and I can can really we'll lay it on. But I, I, in all honesty, support her. I support her. Check her out. Check out the clothing line. Thank you. Asia, again, thank you. I love you. I love and you too. We are, we are out. I hope you enjoyed listening to the interview with Asia Dupree of Comfort Zone Clothing. And this is Deborah Lamata of Woman Entrepreneur Spotlight. Keep checking back for that next Woman Entrepreneur interview.